Господи, боже мой! The Kamchatka Peninsula, located in the far eastern region of Russia, is well known for its intense geological and volcanic activity. Positioned along the Pacific Ring of Fire, this area has experienced numerous high-magnitude seismic events throughout history. One of the most notable was the 1952 earthquake, which registered a magnitude of 9 and triggered a devastating tsunami. This region lies within a complex tectonic interaction, where the Pacific Plate collides with the Okhotsk Microplate, considered an extension of the North American Plate. This geological setup is a hotbed for megathrust earthquakes, the most powerful type recorded on Earth. On the night between July 29th and 30th, a shallow earthquake with a magnitude of 8.7 struck the eastern coast of the Kamchatka Peninsula. Due to its shallow depth, the surface impact was significantly more intense. This was the strongest earthquake since the massive event that hit Japan in 2011. Its shallow depth made the quake even more perceptible, being felt as far as Hokkaido, Japan, roughly 200 miles, 300 kilometers away. Immediately after the earthquake, tsunami alerts were issued for various regions across the Pacific, including Canada, Japan, Alaska, Hawaii, and the west coast of the United States. The epicenter was located approximately 82 miles, 133 kilometers, southeast of Petropavlovsk Kamchatsky, one of the region's main cities. Although the area has a low population density, initial reports pointed to considerable damage. Besides the main shock, several strong aftershocks were recorded, including one measuring 7.0, which reinforced the destructive potential of the event. This seismic sequence began around July 20th with a magnitude 7.4 quake, followed by several intense tremors within a short time frame. This cluster of quakes revealed a significant stress release along the subduction zone between the tectonic plates. Megathrusts like this one are particularly dangerous, as they are capable of releasing enormous amounts of energy and generating tsunamis with wave heights that can exceed 33 feet, 10 meters. The region where the Pacific Plate plunges beneath the Okhotsk Plate is infamous for producing large-scale earthquakes. The Kuril Kamchatka subduction zone has a worrying seismic history, with past events reaching magnitudes as high as 9.0. The energy released in these events not only causes intense tremors, but also sends seismic waves that can be felt far away and potentially trigger faults in nearby regions. The tsunami threat triggered by this earthquake is real and must be taken seriously. Waves between 10 and 13 feet, 3 to 4 meters, are expected in parts of the Pacific Ring of Fire. Experts are closely monitoring developments, as the movement of tectonic plates can influence other regions, such as Japan, which has recently experienced a series of earthquakes. The situation remains uncertain, but the possibility of new quakes cannot be ruled out due to the region's instability. As scientists analyze the series of tremors in the Kamchatka Peninsula, questions arise about a potential connection to the recent quakes in the Hokkaido region of Japan. In recent days, Japan has experienced several earthquakes with magnitudes ranging from 4.0 to 6.3, particularly along the coast and near the Chishima Kuril Trench. This area, like Kamchatka, sits on the edge of the Pacific Plate, where subduction beneath the Okhotsk Plate directly influences seismicity. The geographical proximity of the events, about 200 miles, 300 kilometers apart, raises questions about possible stress transfer. Experts explain that although the two events are part of the same general tectonic dynamics, they occurred in different localized rupture zones. So far, there is no concrete evidence that the Kamchatka quake triggered the tremors in Japan, but the possibility of interregional influence cannot be entirely dismissed. The subduction of the Pacific Plate is a continuous and highly complex process. It moves northwestward at a velocity that varies depending on the contact point with other plates. This movement causes friction and builds up energy, which is eventually released as earthquakes. The Kuril-Kamchatka subduction zone stretches over 1,700 miles, approximately 2,700 kilometers, from Hokkaido to the Aleutian Islands, marking one of the most active seismic and volcanic belts on Earth. The tremors recorded in Hokkaido occurred in a region where the Pacific Plate dives beneath the Earth's crust, creating pressures that are frequently released. 
This type of event can serve as a warning for larger future quakes, especially when they happen in clusters or within a short period. That's why authorities and seismologists remain vigilant for any signs of intensification or spreading seismic activity along this subduction zone. Beyond the immediate threat of shaking, tsunamis remain a constant danger in these regions. The tsunami caused by the 9.0 magnitude quake in 1952 is a clear example. At the time, waves reached nearly 40 feet, 12 meters, and caused severe destruction and tragic loss of life. This history emphasizes the importance of rapid alerts and effective evacuation systems in Pacific coastal areas, especially those that are particularly vulnerable, like Hawaii, Japan, Alaska, and parts of Canada and the United States. At present, the priority is continuous monitoring of the affected regions. Tsunami alert systems are active and coastal populations have been advised to stay away from the ocean and follow safety protocols. The situation demands constant vigilance and preventive action, as more tremors could still occur in the coming hours or days. Scientists continue gathering data and analyzing plate behavior to better understand what might lie ahead. As tremors continue to be recorded in Kamchatka, some exceeding magnitude 7, authorities remain on high alert. Earthquake and tsunami detection systems are running around the clock, issuing warnings for regions including Hawaii, Alaska, Japan, Canada, and the U.S. West Coast. Waves of up to 13 feet, 4 meters, could strike these locations, making it essential to stay away from the shore and follow official guidance. If you live in one of these areas, it's crucial to install earthquake and tsunami alert apps on your phone. Also, having an evacuation plan and knowing where to go in an emergency could make the difference between survival and tragic loss of life. Many people ignore early signs, assuming they're safe because they're far from the epicenter but tsunamis can travel vast distances with devastating force. Being informed is the best way to stay protected. It's also important to note that prevention shouldn't only happen during crises. Governments, communities, and citizens must work together to strengthen infrastructure, educate populations, and invest in monitoring technologies. Nature is unpredictable, but we can be better prepared to face it when we understand the risks and take early action. If you found this content helpful and want to keep up with updates on earthquakes, tsunamis, and other natural events, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Leave a like, share your thoughts in the comments, and send this video to anyone living in high-risk areas. It might help save lives. And remember, Earth is constantly transforming. What happens in one corner of the planet can absolutely affect regions far away. Stay alert, stay informed, and never underestimate the power of nature. See you in the next video.